Good day. I'm going to begin this program with an apology. Um, a short while ago, I was doing. I did a program um, about Alexei Navalny, um, in which I said that I expected that that would be the last program I would do on the subject for some time. I had not expected, and I had not intended, that I would come back to that um, topic so soon, um, because to be totally frank, I think it gets already a disproportionate amount of attention. Nonetheless, I feel that I have to say something about it, precisely because, somewhat to my surprise and disappointment, sections of the Western media continue to dwell obsessively on it. So why am I bringing up the topic of this discussion again today. Well, as most of you no doubt remember, at least those of you who are interested in Navalny, Navalny is a Russian dissident and blogger who last year became involved in a scandal or, 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 or in which he was allegedly poisoned by the Russian authorities with um, a certain um, an, um, agent. I'm not going to mention its name because apparently... Um, um, uh, YouTube doesn't like me doing so, but a certain agent and who, um, after being saved through the treatment he was provided in a Russian hospital, was then transferred to Germany at the personal, uh, 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 on the personal order of President Putin himself, following a request from Angela Merkel. And there, um, uh, and there um, was again supposedly diagnosed as having been poisoned with this substance. Um, that in itself was sufficient to cause a major outcry in the West, but that outcry was made even greater when, to most people's surprise, Navalny took a decision to return to Russia. When he did return to Russia, he was immediately arrested by the Russian authorities who charged him with parole violations. Uh, Navalny having two previous convictions to, uh, for fraud, which date back several years, um, if for which he's received suspended sentences and which come with strict parole conditions, which the Russian authorities say he has been violating. Uh, Navalny was tried for those for those uh, parole viola violations and sentenced to a two and a half year term in prison. And he also faced uh, a fine for having uh, um, uttered words which were defamatory of a war veteran. Anyway, all of this created a great deal of discussion and debate in the West. There was much uh, um, passionate um, um, writing in Western newspapers and much passionate commentary in the Western media about how Navalny was Putin's greatest political adversary and how um, Putin's uh, time in office was numbered because Navalny's, uh, uh, Navalny had managed to capture the imagination of the Russian people and would lead an uprising which would bring Putin and his regime crashing down. At least that was the commentary. And sure enough, there were going to be protests to uh, uh, oppose the Russian authorities' decision to send Navalny to prison. And I always said that this was all wildly exaggerated, completely disconnected from reality, that most Russians didn't uh, uh, think much of Navalny. M uh, 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 those that actively disliked him far outnumbered those who supported him. And I ex predicted and expected that very few people would actually turn out to those protests. And that actually turned out to be the case. And the turnout was so embarrassingly low, though you would not think so from following the Western media, that to the annoyance, and indeed I got the sense, anger of certain Western media entities and uh, Western funders, of parts of the Russian opposition, the protests on, in support of Navalny were suddenly called off. Anyway, Navalny was then taken to prison. 
He then claimed that he was suffering from all sorts of health conditions. He then announced that he was on a hunger strike. There were supposedly concerns that he was about to die. A major petition was organised online for his release. And there was talk that the protests would happen all over again. And on Wednesday, 21st April 2021, an important date in the Russian political calendar, since it coincides surely intentionally with Putin's major keynote speech to the Russian parliament, his presidential address to the parliament and to the nation, it was decided on that day to hold more protests again. And in the run-up to those protests, we were reading again across the Western media the same claims that these would be the biggest protests in Russia's post-communist history, that they were going to show that the regime was tottering, that it was on the brink of collapse, that the Russian people had turned against the regime, that they were supporting Navalny, that Navalny had now managed to cut through the regime's propaganda and had managed to mobilise the Russian people behind him. Well, as things turned out, the size of the protests turned out to be even smaller than the previous protests that had taken place following Navalny's return. The Russian police say that the total number of people who turned up was 14,500 across the whole of Russia, of which 6,000 were in Moscow and 4,500 were in St. Petersburg. Uh, some other um, commentators put the numbers higher than that, but even those uh, Western media agencies which have reported the protests have conceded that they were relatively, or indeed very, small. In fact, they were so embarrassingly small that I noticed that many Western media agencies, newspapers, TV stations and the rest which had been building up their stories in preparation for huge protests. There was talk that 130,000 people would turn out in Moscow, that those agencies, somewhat bewildered and baffled and unsure what to say, decided simply not to cover the story at all. I think this ought to be a good lesson to the West and to the Western media about the realities of Russian politics. Navalny, as I have said many times, is not a significant personality, political personality in Russia. When he confined his activities to blogging um, in, uh, uh, and sought to expose corruption within the government, he did attract for a time a certain amount of attention. Corruption is an issue that does concern many Russians, and it does exist in Russia, though my own uh, experience tells me that it is nowhere near as severe as it once was, and nowhere near as severe as many Westerners think. However, when Navalny started to involve himself in politics, and when he started to take pro-Western and pro-US positions on many topics, he lost a great deal of the interest and support he had had before. Quite simply, there is nothing more toxic for a Russian politician than to appear to be supported by the West. This is um, regardless of what political positions a particular politician takes. He may be left, he may be right, he may be a centrist, he may be a nationalist or a call himself a nationalist, but if the West appears to back him, that is almost guaranteed, that is all but guaranteed, to end any hope he or she may have of gaining traction in Russia. It is very strange that this fact, this very simple fact, is one that is simply not understood in the West and which the West continues to fail to, to see. I, I, one of the things that really brought it home to me 
how completely delusional on this topic some people are was an extraordinary and in some ways I think disastrous tweet by former CIA director John Brennan last year in which he tweeted that he was hoping or imagining that there would be a President Biden in the United States. Donald Trump was at that time still president and the election was still underway and that there would be a President Navalny in Russia. Well, a President Biden in the United States was a real possibility, and it has now happened. A President Navalny in Russia is simply not going to happen, and that possibility does not exist at all. It is staggering that a former CIA director, someone you might think was aware or familiar with the situation in Russia, should believe that it might be possible. But there we are, even a person like Brennan seemed, seemed to think so. It's also astonishing that Brennan would tweet something like that without realising that it would have consequences for Navalny in Russia. Of course, that tweet has been circulated in Russia and it has confirmed a belief that many Russians have, whether rightly or wrongly, that Navalny has some sort of connections with Western intelligence services and might even be an agent of the CIA. I should say straight away that that is not my own belief. I think that is most unlikely for various reasons, which I'm not going to go into in this programme, but that his foundation receives funding from the West is indisputable. And by talking about him in that way, as far as many Russians are concerned, um, they will, uh, uh, Brennan has all but outed him as a CIA agent. So, unsurprisingly, the number of people who are prepared to come out in support of him is going to be very small. My own guess, by the way, it can only be a guess, is that that figure of the Russian police... 14,500, is about right. Even Russian liberals consider Navalny toxic and steer clear of him, partly because of his extreme nationalist views, which he has expressed in the past, but also because of his believed connection to the West. The West has an extraordinary habit of supporting all sorts of unlikely and strange people, people like the Russian oligarch Boris Berezovsky, people like the other Russian rod, uh, oligarch Mikhail Khodorkovsky, and thinking that their backing will win for these people support in Russia, despite the fact that the reality is that it does the diametric opposite. What these actions do, however, is enrage the Russians. For a very long time, the Russian authorities tolerated Navalny's activities because they, uh, um, I think, decided that to move against him might um, antagonise the West. But undoubtedly, this meddling in their affairs via people like Navalny um, has enraged and annoyed them. And there are many people, I have no doubt, in the Russian political establishment and especially the Russian security establishment who have been keen to get to grips with him for a very long time now. Um, last year, over the course of the poisoning scandal that he became involved in, um, the patience even of those more moderate figures of the Russian establishment, um, amongst whom I suspect President Putin is one, finally snapped where Navalny is concerned. And the result is that the protection that he was previously being granted because of the concern not to rock the boast with the West through his arrest, well, that concern no longer exists. The result is 
that he is now in prison and, as the facts show, support for him in Russia is, to all intents and purposes, non-existent. I have to say straight away that at some level I'm actually, if not exactly sorry for Navalny, I can see why he has been led into this situation which he finds now finds himself in by the attention he has obtained in the West. It's quite likely that if the West had left him alone, he would continue to be what he was for a time very successfully, which was a blogger. Now, because of all that attention he got, he was tempted to involve himself in politics, a field in which he is completely, to which he's completely unsuited, and as a result, he is now in prison. As to his health condition, I'm going to say straight away that I have no information about that, but John Helmer, who is a journalist, very experienced in Russian affairs, and who has gone through the um, um, medical records that were supplied by the Charité Hospital. John Helmer, after apparently um, contacting various British doctors and medical people, has concluded that Navalny actually suffers from a variety of medical conditions. So it is quite possible that he is indeed generally in poor state of health and does need special treatment for that, those health conditions when in prison. I suspect that he will get it. I don't think it is in the Russian in government's interest to let him die, despite what some people say. I'm not, by the way, in any position to verify these claims about Navalny and his medical condition. Myself, as I've said many times, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor and I'm not able to read the information provided by the Charité Hospital in Berlin and reach any independent conclusions of my own about it. So there we are. He's going to remain in prison. There is not going to be a huge upsurge of support for him. He is a political irrelevance. If he is treated as that, both by the West and by the media in the West, and indeed by some of his supporters in Russia, he has a real chance of leaving prison, perhaps resuming his own life, old life, as a blogger, and uh, at which point the likelihood is he's going to be left alone. Personally, I don't think that option exists. I think having uh, tasted the attractions, the dubious att uh, attractions that come with so much attention, Navalny is not going to be able to simply revert to that sort of life. And I expect that at some point, perhaps sooner rather than later, perhaps after he leaves prison, following the end of his prison sentence, we will see that he emigrates to the West with his family and perhaps claims asylum there, at which point his political career in the West will be once and forever ended. Thank you for joining me for, the, for this programme. Please check out my other programmes um, um, that, that I do with my colleague and friend, Alex Christoforou on our main channel, The Duran. You will find uh, links under this video. Please also check out Alex's channel. You will also find links to that channel under this video also. Please also check out our, 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 our very check us out on our various other platforms, BitChute, Library, Rumble, and Odyssey, and all the rest. Please also uh, um, 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 support us via PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar to the extent that you can. We accept donations in all currencies, including the new electronic ones. Please also uh, check out our Discord server. And, of course, go to our shop and see the wonderful things we have there, our famous magic mugs, our hats, our hoodies, our sweatshirts, and all the rest. And thank you for joining me for this programme, and I look forward to you joining me in future programmes, both on this channel and on our other channels. And 
please also check your subscription as well. And thank you for joining me on this programme and have a wonderful day.